Good morning. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and having salvation lowly and riding on a donkey. Good morning and welcome to your Palm Sunday service here at Coleman United Methodist Church. How you doing? It is so good to see all of you this morning. All right. But I'm especially happy to see our brother, Brother Gilbert, back with us after back surgery. God is good. He brought us all the way back and brought him home to us. It's good to see him this morning. I am Brother Vernon Robbins. I am your worship leader this morning. And again, it is very, very good to see all of you this morning. And we're going to praise God and, uh, you know, go back a little bit because it's a joyous occasion when he did go into Jerusalem, riding in on a donkey. What a great day that was. And uh, we celebrate that today. Right now, we'd like to have our opening prayer from Sister Banks. Good morning, my church family. It's good to see you today. And those out there on the live stream, it's good to see you too. <laughs> Amen. Amen. This is Palm Sunday. And like he, our brother Vernon said, it's the triumph ride of Jesus to Jerusalem to fulfill his destiny. Amen. Amen. So to, because it is uh, Palm Sunday, I have a special Palm Sunday prayer. So be in the mind of prayer and pray with me. Dear Almighty God, the God of love, thank you for sending your son and paving the way for our lives to be free through Jesus' death on the cross. Thank you for this day. It stands for the beginning of the Holy Week the start of the journey towards the power of the cross, the victory of the resurrection, and the rich truth that Jesus truly is our King of Kings. Hosanna, the highest he who comes blessed in the name of the Lord. We give our praise and honor to your ways, O God, for they are righteous and true. We give you worship, for you are holy and just. We will declare that your love stands firm forever, for your loving kindness endureth forever. Thank you that your ways are greater than our ways. Your thoughts are deeper than our thoughts. Thank you that you had a plan to redeem us. Thank you that you make all things new. Thank you that you face towards the righteous, and you hear our prayers and know our hearts. Help us to stay strong and true to you. Help us to follow after the voice that is not, that is not, help us, help us not to follow the voice that's not of you, but press close to you to hear your whispers and seek after you alone. We praise you, we glorify your name, we bless you, thank you that you reign supreme over more, and we are more than conquerors through the gift of Christ. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
Sinners. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? I'll tell y'all something. He's already done it. You already heard. It is finished. That's a beautiful song, and we thank you so much for that. Give our cry another round of applause. Amen. I have some announcements for us. There will be a funeral for Sister Dorothy Wilson, and uh, that will be on the 16th at uh, Union Coleman UMC in Wharton, Maryland. And we send our uh, condolences out to her family. Then there will be an Easter egg hunt on the 17th after the 11 a.m. service. And with more on that, May I pass the pillow? <laughs> you know, I always follow a good worship leader. All right, for um, our services for Holy Week, so, uh, and we'll, we'll do the Easter egg as part of that. So for the next week, let's start off with that. So after service next week, there is an Easter egg hunt that has been uh, planned. Um, uh, Sister Samaja is heading up uh, that effort. Uh, we've also uh, believe some people from um, Asbury here uh, might be joining in with us. So just know that there'll be an Easter egg uh, hunt on uh, after service on Sunday. Uh, backing up a little bit, we have planned, and y'all excuse the, as I was saying uh, earlier this morning to our Buttonwood family, you know, um, we like to plan ahead. Ideally, that's what we would like to do, but in the season that we're in, that's not always possible uh, because, believe it or not, there's a lot of things going on, especially with the clergy and our, uh, you know, working and planning for the, uh, so excuse the last moment of this, but on um, next Friday night, there will be a Good Friday service, you know, um, it's going to be in a seven last words type uh, format. Uh, we will have um, uh, music provided by our, our um, uh, Coleman family. A mass choir has been uh, requested, and Sister Mayo, I believe, will be providing as uh, our uh, musician. So that will be Good Friday, uh, this Friday at 7 p.m. Um, there will be a sunrise service uh, next Sunday at 7 a.m. here and it will be outside. It's going to be outside in the front, uh, you know, so, you know, it's like we used to do it before, 
you know, you can listen from the parking lot in your car or you can come sit on the, on the lawn. And so we'll have that. And that will be a combination uh, also of uh, Coleman, uh, Buttonwood is invited to, uh, to participate, and Asbury uh, is also uh, participating. On Thursday, um, Pastor Tracy and Asbury combining uh, with uh, Pastor Ty uh, Tyran Smith, is, they're going to have a, um, a Thursday service that we're also invited to that will start at 7 p.m. So just going through that, there will be a service on Thursday here at Asbury at 7 p.m. On Friday, there will be a, a, a seven last words type service at 7 p.m. And then on Sunday, there will be a sunrise service. There will be our regular services. And then we will have an Easter egg hunt on Sunday evening. So feel free to participate in some or all of those particular services. Everything that I just said will be sent out to you in the form of an email, probably before the end of the day today, so you'll have it you know, uh, there. If you have any questions, please call myself or Pastor Gail uh, for clarity or details. Amen? Amen. All right, it is time for our offering. Let us bow our heads. Heavenly Father, you woke us up this morning. We thank you so much for that great blessing. But we also thank you for the gifts that you bestow upon us each and every day of our lives. And so now it is time for us to pay you back and give you our gifts. We ask that you bless these gifts in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And as they're coming forward for the um, offering, just so the choir know that we love them uh, dearly and we do recognize that um, people are taking your prayer chant as the, as the song. So when, before you do the sermonic hymn, we're going to ask you to not deny us of that song. So we'll ask for two at that point. Okay? God bless. Unto the Lord, for he is good, yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, yes, he is good, for he is worthy, worthy, for he is good, yes, he is good, he is worthy, worthy. It's time for scripture readings. Let us welcome Sister Mary Trotter as she reads from the book of Psalms, chapter 118, 1 and 2, and 19 and 24. I will be reading from the New Revised Standard Version, Psalms 118, 1 and 2, and 19 through 24, a song of victory. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected 
has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in, his, in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. 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 Now let us welcome our first lady, Sister G. Pelham. She'll be reading Luke chapter 19, verses 28 through 40. Thank you. Let us stand for the reading of the gospel. After he had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he had come near Bethphage and Bethany at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Just say this, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? They said, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Sister Mary Trotter, and thank you, Sister Judy Pelham. It is time for our sermonic hymn, uh, and I think I just found out there will be two. There will be two. So enjoy these two beautiful hymns, and the next voice you hear after that will be that of Reverend Lawrence Pelham. I'm Vernon Robbins, and thank you for letting me be your worship leader this Sunday morning. God bless all of you. Amen.
favor I'll tell of his love I'll tell of his goodness to me He purchased my redemption From sin, I have been set free. I tell of his favor, I tell of his love, I tell of his goodness. my redemption and with his precious blood and from sin I have been set free He pled for me 
didn't let me hide myself in these. Jesus of the water and the blood come down on me when my sides get low. He will send the dog who cure. See from wrath, see from wrath, see from wrath. Come on, make me pure. He's his eagle's wheel, turning in the middle of a wheel. Jeremiah's fire shut up all in his bone, and it just will leave him. Just wouldn't leave him alone. He's down the stone, spewed out of the mountain, rolled it in the Babylon, and it came in the time of prayer. Tell me what you call him. Tell me what you call him. Tell me what you call him. Tell me what's what his name. Alpha and Omega. Beginning and the end, first and last, soon coming king. Some call him mother, somebody call him father, somebody call him sister, somebody call him brother. Yes, he bread when you're hungry. Yes, he water. When he thirsty, well I know he won't deny me. Always walk beside me. I call Jesus my rock. Okay, y'all see why I needed both of those songs, you know. I want to thank Sister Marcelita and Pastor uh, Eric Smith for uh, leading our choir. Amen. Okay. Thank our choir. Uh, I have been redeemed. Brother Sam, you still got it. <laughs> Brother Davis, for y'all who don't know Brother Davis yet, that's Brother Reggie Davis from Buttonwood United Methodist Church. Okay. Uh, he sings lead real well, doesn't he? <laughs> and it is good to see Brother uh, Gilbert. And, you know, um, Reverend Austin brings so much to his songs. You can, you, can, you can see the joy in him when he is singing, you know. And so we greatly appreciate that, that he brings his passion, you know, to the song. So we are grateful. I also want to thank Brother uh, Vernon Robbins for always leading us, uh, doing a wonderful job of leading us in uh, worship. And for all that he does, he is, he is a treasure himself. Thanks to our readers of scripture and all the other people who make what we do uh, possible. And let us not forget uh, our uh, IT team back there who are handling the, you know, the live streaming and all of the details associated um, with that and let us keep our people lifted up in prayer and especially uh, Brother Dwight and Sister Joan and the loss of uh, uh, Dwight Clayton's uh, mom and you heard the, about the service being held on uh, next, uh, next Saturday. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, Lord, we thank you, God, for every precious moment. But, Lord, especially on this day, Lord, God, we thank you, Lord, for what Jesus Christ has done for us. So, Lord, we ask, God, that you prepare us now to hear from you, to learn from you, that, Lord, we might, God, be able to take what you give us and give it to someone else. Lord, we ask you to open hearts and open minds and Lord, help us, God, to feel your presence, to hear your voice. 
Lord, make me but your vessel, God, that the word might be yours, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I hope that each and every one of you got um, a palm. Um, I want you to, you know, really just, just uh, as we go through this particular sermon, we're going to be talking a little bit about just what it means, you know, when we use these palms to represent uh, something. And so uh, if you want a little one and got a bigger one, I, you know, later on, I think you, you, she can add to that because um, we want you to, once you learn more about them, you know, we want you to enjoy them as a symbol of what God has us to be placed in remembrance of today. Because this is Palm Sunday, but it's also the first day of Passion Week. And so on the Christian calendar, they've now started calling today Palm slash Passion Week. Okay, I don't know if that's new to any of you, but I want you to pay attention to both parts of that because in the message today, we want to highlight why remembering what the palm represents and what Passion Week is all about and why it's important to us today. We celebrate Jesus as being victorious, uh, but we also lament the amount of suffering that Jesus uh, took on in order to complete his mission. So giving honor to both the amazing grace that God gave us through Jesus Christ and the enormity, the, the, the enormous price that was paid on our behalf in pain and suffering. As Jesus neared uh, Jerusalem for the last time, Jesus knew this was coming. He, 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 he talked about it with his disciples. He tried to prepare them for what was coming. And as he approached Jerusalem, he stopped at the Mount of Olives. And Jesus sent his disciples out you know, to a nearby village in order to retrieve a young donkey called a colt, cult, in other words. Okay? And it, after doing so, they came back and they put some clothing, or they call it cloaks or a blanket or something, on that uh, young donkey, and Je Jesus got on it in order to ride it. As Jesus is leaving the Mount of Olives, a large crowd has developed. And think of it as like uh, a parade where people are on both sides of the, of the path where uh, Jesus is, is, is riding on. And this crowd, they began to, to shout. They, they, they began to say, praise God for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. So not only were they placing, you know, these palms and other types of greenery there, but they were also shouting, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. You know, back in those days, people were familiar with these kinds of processions into the city because kings and rulers and uh, military leaders, when they returned uh, to their city or were entering a, a, a city, you know, these processions became very uh, common. They came in riding on the best of horses and the finest uh, saddles and that kind of stuff. You know, so this was a familiar type of thing, just not done, you know, for Jesus in the past or before. So if you look also at the cult, you know, this young uh, donkey, it was a, uh, an animal that princes rode when they visited somewhere and they wanted to, to uh, express their intentions that they come in peace. And so the young uh, cult, the, the, the donkey, was also familiar uh, Jesus came, though, not to conquer the Roman Empire. You see, the people who were there, they were looking for something different than what Jesus was actually coming for. They thought they were getting a conquering king similar to what had happened in their history with King David. But Jesus came to conquer much bigger enemies. 
Jesus came to defeat sin and to defeat death and to redeem humanity. See, the people of Israel thought they had a problem with the, uh, you know, with the Roman Empire, but actually the world had a bigger problem. And Jesus came for that bigger problem. Kings and military leaders, when they came, they were arrogant and they were proud. Jesus, when he came, Jesus was humble. Jesus came to Jerusalem to give his life to change our world and to change the spirit world. Jesus came so that we could have eternal peace with God. I hope you're starting to see the difference between, you know, while we can get caught in the moment with all, of all the garbage that is going on down here, all the oppression and that kind of stuff, and the difference between what Jesus was actually coming for, that the issues in the spirit world of sin and justice and all of that is much more important than even our conditions that we're going through in the moment. This idea of throwing palms and other types of greenery because you can imagine the folks if they didn't have palms they would take whatever they had and 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 put it down there to to express their appreciation or to honor the people who were coming uh, back in you know this was a custom that was developed you know for the various feasts that the people had to uh you know celebrate you know if you were part of the people of Israel back in that day, there were about four feasts that were held throughout the year. And if you were a part of the people of Israel and you were able to do so, you know, you had a responsibility to come back to Jerusalem once a year in order, to, you know, for one of these feasts. And so typically as people were entering in, you know, they would do the same thing. They would put these palms and other things down to as a way of recognizing or, or appreciating those people who are coming by. And this is stated in Psalms 118. It says, crowds would have shouted blessings on the pilgrims in the name of the Lord and called on the Lord for salvation. So even this practice was something that was familiar to the people back then. The followers of Jesus had began to view Jesus as a king, a king sent by God, a king because of the things that Jesus had done. You know, the disciples, especially up close, had seen these signs and wonders that which we call uh, miracles. He had, they had seen Jesus heal the sick at seeing Jesus feed the hungry, driving out demons in people, and even raising like Lazarus from the dead. Who but a king sent by God could do such things? And so the disciples, you know, had declared Jesus to be a king. You know, as the sign on the cross said, king of the Jews. Those along the road, they may have thought that after Jesus had done all this miraculous stuff, that surely Jesus might be the Messiah that was promised to them by God in the Old Testament. They might have thought that Jesus was the one who had come to Jerusalem to you know, overthrow, overcome, you know, this empire, this Roman empire, so that the Jews again would be on top of the world because, you know, back in the time of King David, all the enemies of Israel were defeated and they lived in peace. So they longed for this peace. They longed for this power and, and so forth, but they did not yet understand, you know, where Jesus was coming from. The people themselves, they wanted to be saved from the social, the psychological, the financial uh, oppression that they were going through. Their hope was for political or military power, more so, you know, than all the other stuff that they really, really needed. They did not yet know. They did not yet understand that Jesus had came to save them from spiritual oppression. If y'all know what I'm talking about, there's nothing worse, you know, than spiritual oppression because until you get right with God, nothing else matters. You can have all the money, you can have all the power, but if you ain't right with God, it ain't going to work out for you. 
You know, that's a message for the world today, especially as we look at some of the wars that are going around uh, the world today. It ain't just in Ukraine. That's perhaps the one that's getting the most news. But there's a whole lot of stuff going on and a whole lot of people doing something that God is not pleased with. And they don't yet understand that it's not going to work. You know, that no matter what comes out of what they are doing, you know, the things of God matter more and they will understand that in this world or the next. Jesus, you know, and with Jesus, sometimes we focus almost entirely, even in this Easter season, we focus on the cross, you know, on the death of Jesus because it is so important. But what we need to understand on Palm Sunday, you know, before we get to the crucifixion and all that stuff that goes with the Passion Week, we have to understand that every day of the life of Jesus was important to us. And that is because Jesus lived for 30 years, you know, having a life just like ours, you know, and did not fall short of the will of God. 30 years. We need to recognize that if Jesus had committed one sin during that time, when Jesus went to the cross, Jesus would not have been able to die for us because Jesus would have had to pay the price for his own sins. We are free because of those early years of the life of Christ. So let us not forget Jesus wasn't born when he was baptized. Okay? That was just recognition. The reason that Jesus had to come from heaven, you know, in the word was so that he wouldn't have a sin nature so he could demonstrate that someone could follow the will of God. But after being baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit, y'all remember the story, you know, when Jesus was about 30 years old, he came and he allowed John the Baptist to baptize him and God spoke from heaven and the Holy Spirit was, you know, was sent uh, to him, you know, and after doing that, he went off into the desert and, you know, he was tempted and all of that kind of stuff. But that's when he started his, his, his ministry on on, on, on earth and he started doing all of those uh, signs and wonders and so forth. We call them uh, miracles and still yet again with all that power, Jesus never fell short of the will of God. He never sinned even though he had so much power and authority in him. You know, he didn't abuse it for personal gain. Uh, or anything like that, if you look at the people who have power, can you imagine, y'all might see some people who gained a little power, you know, you know that, that, that stuff they think is important, you know, and you see how they start to act. All you got to do is look at our political class, you know, look at some of our people who lead churches and other institutions, those people who lead companies and so forth. You get a little power and all of a sudden it becomes about something other than the will of God or the good of the people. So Jesus had enormous power, more power than anybody has in the world, and yet he did not abuse it. So therefore, Jesus was able to defeat sin. Because Jesus had no sin, Jesus was able to die for our sins. We need to give God some glory, you know, just for what Jesus did just by resisting Satan, by resisting evil, by not letting pride overcome him. So God is due our honor, our worship, our praise. You know, God is due glory because without Jesus, we would still be lost, you know. And we have people today who are lost and don't even know it. And that is why we celebrate Palm Sunday. Jesus lived for us from the time Jesus was a baby. Jesus lived for us. Jesus confronted sin and won the battle. Thank God 
for Jesus. Thank God that he won every battle, every, he resisted every temptation. When we wave our palms, we can thank God for freedom and forgiveness of sins. Glory to the Father. Glory to God for what Jesus has done. But you know, the mission was not complete. After entering Jerusalem, Jesus had other work to do. You'll hear about some of those stories as we go through this Passion Week. You know, you know that on Thursday, you know, on Thursday evening, Jesus had the Passover meal with his uh, disciples. And Jesus was betrayed by Judas, one of the 12 uh, disciples. He would be falsely accused. Jesus had done nothing wrong, but... In spite of all of that, Jesus was beaten, you know, all kinds of things. Things were said to him. People spat on him and all that kind of stuff. And then on Sunday, Jesus was crucified on a cross. It is what Jesus went through. All that pain, all that suffering is why we call the week Passion Week. So as we celebrate the life and the ministry of Jesus in those 33 years, we mourn, we mourn with extreme gratitude for what Jesus voluntarily went through because remember, he had the power. You know, he had the Holy Spirit. You know, he was God on earth and the, the scripture tells us that, you know, he didn't have to do it, but he did. And he did it for us. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God for what Jesus did for us. Amen? Amen. And amen. Remember what the palms signify. They signify 33 years of life totally pleasing to God. You know? so that he could be the unblemished lamb that went to the cross for us. You know, this story only means something if you are a believer. If you don't believe, you may be living what you consider a good life, but you don't yet get it, okay? Believing. Jesus paid the price for us. He paid the price for all of humanity. But you're only saved if you accept what Jesus did. You must believe. You must accept what God has freely given, what God has made available to us. And so if you don't know Jesus Christ, as Lord and Savior, don't wait another minute. Give your life to Christ. Accept the gift. You don't have to understand everything. Just believe by faith that what Jesus went through and his death on the cross was for you. And accept the freedom that only God can give. I'll ask those who are comfortable doing so, who are here, to stand for just a moment. Because, you know, when we give invitations, you know, it's, I'm told that it's pretty tough to stand up and stand out. And so we're not looking for you to do that. So we ask people to make it a little easier to just to rise up so that you're already standing. We thank God for the gift. But if you've already accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, Jesus wants you to be part of the body of Christ. That means you need to participate. I know it's very popular these days to believe that you can worship all by yourself, that you can be spiritual and not religious. But I'm here to tell you, God created this system so that we would work together. So if you don't have a local church home, 
we'd be glad to have you here at Coleman. If you're on the live stream or happen to watch this from a distance, go to a local church. That way you can join with others who are also believers. But accept Jesus Christ and become part of not only the universal church, but become a part of the local church so that we can do the will of God. We can do what Jesus did. Our last call is for prayer. The altar is open. You can either come to the altar, you can sit, you can stand, but assume a position that allows you to ignore what's going on in the world and what's going on around you so that you can just have a little talk with God. You can sit if you like or assume any prayer position you choose and the altar is still open. Gracious and loving God. Lord, we're so grateful. Lord, you are indeed worthy of honor and glory. Lord, we thank you, God. Only you, O oh God, could have come up with the plan to send yourself in the form of the man we call Jesus. Only you could have come up with that. For Lord, you knew that we could not do it for ourselves, that born with a sin nature, that we could not live without sin. So God, you made a way. You sent Jesus. And Jesus lived the life that allowed him to pay the price. So Lord, we are grateful. We're grateful, oh God, for who you are and what you've done, what you've done for each and every one of us. Lord, we know, God, that the world is going through so much. And Lord, in our times, it seems like it's so bad, but it's been bad times, God, throughout. But Lord, you've always had a people. And so, Lord, we ask you, God, to just, God, to open our hearts and our minds and, God, and to allow us, oh, God, don't give up on us, God, that we, Lord, might grow into being more like Jesus Christ. So, Lord, we ask, God, for a fresh forgiveness of sin, that we might be free once again, oh, God, to start a journey of being totally pleasing in your sight, that, Lord, we can kind of weed out and correct those things that we've been talking about during this season of Lent, God, that, Lord, we will release knowing, God, that you are a forgiving God and that, Lord, we are still free. So we thank you, O oh God. Lord, now having... Lord, forgiving us, God. Lord, we ask you, God, to help us, Lord, to be the one that responds to your voice, that does your will, that, Lord, we will do our part to heal the sick, that, Lord, we will do our part to feed the hungry, that, Lord, we will give comfort to people, God. But Lord, we know that we can't do but so much. Lord, we know that people are carrying a burden. So Lord, we ask them, God, that while we are praying, that Lord, they will let go and let you. That Lord, anything that they are fearing, Lord, anything, God, that they are concerned or worry about, Lord, help them, God, to trust you 
and just let you have it so that God, they'll be free to just go out and be obedient, God, and to do their best, Lord, to do your will. Because, Lord, we know that we have a part, but, Lord, we know that changing the world can't be done without you. So, Lord, we ask your blessings upon our lives. Lord, we ask you to touch those who are sick to heal them. God, we ask you to be with the bereaved so that they will get through their season, oh God. That, Lord, once again, they will be able to do what you would have us to do. We just thank you, oh Lord. We love you, God. We praise your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. remember y'all that Palm Sunday is about Jesus having completed a major part of his assignment. Having lived without sin, Jesus can enter into Passion Week and complete the tasks that we will celebrate next Sunday. So let us just live the life, remembering what Jesus has done, remembering, you know, that Jesus suffered for us, and just give God the glory as we go through. Anything before we close? Okay. Uh, she says, if anyone needs a palm, get in touch with Sister Carol Moore, and she will bring one. If you have someone at home or will encounter somebody during the week and you would like a palm for them, see her before you go. All righty. Let us stand and prepare ourselves for the benediction. Go into... God's world, aware of God's call in your life. Follow our Lord Jesus Christ, who will lead you in paths of service and hope. Lean on the power of the Holy Spirit to give you courage and strength. May peace, joy, and love flow through you to others in God's name. Amen. Amen. amen, amen. And amen. Let the church.